what is permutation music? And how do we make permutations of notes, samples, sound sources work in a controlled manner? With absolute control. And is this something that will suit your taste and your style? Let's find out. Think of permutations as unique sets of combinations. These things being permutated can be notes, samples, uh, modulation sources, any kind of sound source. There are three different ways of doing it, digital, analog, or a mix of both. I will do it almost completely analog. In order to achieve permutations, I will use something called Eurorack, which is a modular synthesizer that gives you an enormous amount of freedom and a territory to explore. In addition, Eurorack is fully hands-on. Here is a permutated breakbeat made on my modular synthesizer. Or how about four different samples played in 24 different ways? The samples are quite different. Just listen as one. Two, three, and sample four. I will first play them slowly, then relatively fast. Be sure these samples, or whatever you permutate, can be modulated and changed during the course of playing through the permutations. So you get, if you like, an endless variety of music. The maximum number of permutations, if you have four different things, is 24. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is 24. Let's say you have five different things, then the number of possible permutations, that is unique combinations, is 120. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And if you are interested, I have explained briefly the math behind this in the description of the video. The field is called combinatorics. I'm not an expert, but I'm familiar with the field. In Muller, we are often talking about randomness and generative music. And I think I never heard the word permutation music, even though it certainly exists already. Permutations are a natural occurring phenomena when you change the variables in your patch. But hey, having full control over the permutations, that is something completely different. And I have explained at the end of this video how to patch your system in order to achieve full control with four different things being permutated. I'm using just a handful of modules, and you can do this with other kind of modules. You need, for example, dual switches, and you need some kind of trigger sequencer. And a sequential switch, I guess. You always need a sequential switch, and I use, as always, Dopfer A151. The best module in Eurorack, whatever the price, and the price of that module is some $70. So it's... Uh, no brainer. In addition to that, I use uh, the Dopfer Octal switch, which is really a set of eight dual switches, but it has a larger feature set as well as you can use one 
switch to control adjacent switches. Permutation music is something that resembles generative music. It is just that the number of variations are determined at the beginning. And there is a limit to the number of permutations. If you add variations to the different sound sources, samples, notes, during the course of playing through the permutations, you will approach what is called generative music. So I think permutation music is One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, three, four. One, two, four. One, two, three. Two, one, three, four. One, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, one, four. Two, one, three. One, three, two, four. Three, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, two, four, three, two, one, three, two, one, four, two, one, four, three, one, four, three, two, four, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, four, one, two, four, three. What do we have here? We have the octal switch from Dopfer, voltage controlled, eight dual switches. They can be arranged in as master and slave. Many config configurations are possible. Then we have the sequential switch from Dopfer, then another one. I call this number one and this number two. We have four different sources of audio or samples or pitch data or modulation data. Okay. And then, and the goal here is to permutate those four sources and four different sources will yield 24 unique combinations. If you have five sources that will give you a whopping 120 different permutations. And I think that's a little bit too much. And six so uh, free sources will give you six permutations, a little bit too few. So I think four sources are a good balance. Now, how do we patch it? We have red as source number one. We have white as source number two. We will have source number two into this fourth row. I will explain why later. This is just a more efficient way of doing it, as you will see. And then I take the output from this fourth row into the second row. Okay. And now I put audio source number one. I say audio source, but of course, it can be any kind of source. Okay, so these are inputs and uh, this, these are outputs. Okay, this is bi-directional, but this input-output third column works as an output column. Okay, and column one and column two work as inputs. Okay, now. I take the output from the first row into here, but I use these tip top cables. So when the column one is active, input audio source one will come in here, out through the green cable into this 
first slot. Okay, first input on the sequential switch number one. Now the sequential switch number two will be the reverse order of the first one. So I patch this one into four. Only one sequential switch is active at a time and I can reveal to you that the first 12 permutations are made using this switch. Then the next and final 12 are made using this switch. And these are the last 12. And to facilitate that, it's a trick I just came up with. I reverse the order. It makes this patching more efficient because I don't have to change it. So I can get all the permutations uh, indefinitely. 24 permutations again and again, as long as I have the power on and the triggers coming into the sequential switches, of course. I will not, by the way, focus on the triggers because they will be evident from the principle behind the patch. At least I think so. Now, the second row on the octal switch will be the blue cable coming into the second input on the first sequential switch and reversed the third one on the second sequential switch. Okay. So we have input or audio source one is the green one. And the blue is the second one. The third source for this one, I use a black cable. Okay, this little bugger, this is audio source number three. And I use a yellow cable. As a good teacher I am, I use different colors. And this goes into number three, reverse number two. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, coming out into this one, two, three. Now, the fourth audio source will not be manipulated by the voltage controlled octal switch, it will come directly from whatever source you use. Okay. So this is the cyan cable and reversed. It will be the first one. Okay. So now you have the other one, two, three, four. And finally we have to patch in Audio source two into the third row, second column, and audio source three into the second column as well on the fourth row. So what happens now when I start? Well, this switch is the first one active. I take the output from this switch into the eighth row. So the out, so left column on the octal switch is the first one active. I take the output from this and then the output from that into whatever you need, a VCA filter, whatever. When I'm finished with the first sequential switch, I take the output from this sequential switch into the second column on the eighth row of the octal switch. Okay. Now let's assume that we start this running triggers coming in and uh, then the red one is the first one being played. The first or the left column on the octal switch is the one active. Active. One, two, three, and four. Now I use a technique called the fifth step muted technique, which is not a technique per se. It's not just something I came up with in order to get this to work, meaning I use five steps to switch the sequential switch. Well, that may be odd as the switch 
has only four steps or four inputs. Well, since the fifth step is muted, I get this combination when I start. One, two, three, four. The first one is muted, meaning it will not be heard. The next one being heard is two, three, four, one. The second permutation. But now the second one be, will be muted as this is the fifth step. So we get three, four, one, two. And then finally, four, one, two, three. Four permutations using the first leftmost column on the octal switch. Okay, having done that, I will need to get four new permutations. This is the time when I switch between input source one and input source two. Switching from column one to column two on row one and two on the octal switch. So now audio source two will be the first one and audio source one will be the second one. And I will get these permutations. So I switch from row from column two to column one on row one and two after having gotten the first eight permutations. Now, at the same time I do that, I switch from column one to column two on row three and four, switching two with three, input source two with input source three. So now I will, this will be back on, back being the first one, and I will get these permutations, one, three, two, four, muted, then three, two, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, three, two. When I've done that, I have 12 permutations, okay? Now I do what I've just done a second time, but switching from this sequential switch to this one. Meaning I start by having four, three, two, one, and I switch one with two, getting those permutations, and then switch back, uh, and at the same time switching two with three. I have made a graphic for you explaining the setup very clearly so you get a visual cue on how it is set up. And I will show it for some seconds. You can pause the video in order to study it. Of course, there are other ways of doing these 24 or coming up with the 24 permutations. But I think this patch is quite efficient. I hope these demonstrations have sparked your curiosity and your lust to explore this field. If you like the video, consider giving it a like because the YouTube algorithms are crushing. I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye.